Welcome folks, we would like to show you a new tutorial on how to use ORCAD BSPICE to simulate RLC circuits at DC. So let's assume we have this particular circuit and, and this particular circuit uh, contain DC voltage sources only. There is no switching and there is no time variant sources. So this circuit is a pure DC circuit. And then we have here resistors like R1, R2, R3, and also we have capacitor and inductor. So we have RLC circuit at DC. So we know that at DC, the inductor behaves as short circuit. And the reason is that the voltage across the inductor as a function of time is defined as L di dt. If the circuit is DC, then this derivative equals to zero because nothing is changing with respect to time. That leads to the voltage across the inductor will be L times zero, which is basically zero. The derivative is zero. So we have the voltage across the inductor becomes zero and that is modeled as a short circuit. So the inductor is a short circuit. Uh, for the capacitor, we know that the capacitor basically says that the current through the, cap the capacitor is defined as C times dVc dt. And since the voltage across the capacitor is constant, doesn't change with time because the circuit is a pure DC circuit, then the derivative dVc dt is going to be zero. That means the current through the inductor IC of t will equal to C times zero, which is zero. And this basically makes the capacitor open circuit. So we want to show you how to simulate uh, RLC circuits at DC using ORCAD. So let's go ahead and start loading ORCAD. So when we load ORCAD BSPICE, I'm going to basically start a new project. So I will go to file a new project and I will give uh, the project a name. So I would say, for example, is RLC DC Sir 1. Just give it any name you want, right? So I called it here uh, RLC DC Sir 1. Make sure you click on BSPICE option because. BSPICE stands for circuit simulation. So we are interested in doing circuit simulation here. We're going to click OK. You make sure you create a blank project. We click OK. Now we are uh, going to start a new project. I'm going to come here to a place part. I'll click on that. I'll make sure that I have the source and the analog and the eval libraries already installed. Anyway, so the first thing I'm going to add here is the DC voltages. So I'll say that V DC. And then I will have two voltage sources to the circuit. I will have the first one going to be 12 volts. Uh, the second one going to be 8 volts. So I will come to the first one. I will make sure that I enter the value of 12 volts. And to the second one, I will enter the value of uh, 8 volts. Uh, uh, this circuit has three resistors, so I'm going to come to parts. I will write R. It's under analog library, so I will have the first resistor going to be here, uh, which equals to 10K. Then I will have another resistor over here, which is equal to 4.7K. You can click on R to rotate this resistor. Then I'm going to click on R twice to uh, bring that resistor back, which is R3. So R1 going to have the value of uh, 10K. R2 has the value of 4.7K. And R3 will have the value of 2.2K. Uh, So I'm going to move this resistor a little bit farther and this resistor a little one grid size down. Uh, I might move this voltage source one out. Now what I'm going to add is the inductor. So I should have one millihenry inductor. So the inductor name 
in ORCAD has the letter L. It's under analog library, so I will do that. And then I will have an, an inductor here, and I will give it a value of uh, 1 millihenry. So I will write 1M. And I also need a capacitor. The capacitor in ORCAD has the symbol C, part of the analog library. So I will add a capacitor. I will rotate it once. I will have a capacitor here. This capacitor is going to have the value of 10 micro. So it's 10 U, 10 micro, 10 U. Then I need one ground uh, for the circuit. Every ORCAD circuit must have an, a ground node. Uh, so this is the ground node. And basically now what we're going to do is we are going to connect the uh, rest of the circuit. So I will basically connect the voltage source to the resistor, R1. R1 is connected to L1 and to the capacitor. So uh, we going to connect the rest of the circuit. So we're going to connect basically L to R3. I think I'm going to move this resistor a little bit to the side. We'll make it look nicer maybe. Now we're going to connect R2 to R3 and L1. And then we're going to connect R3 to uh, the, uh, uh, the bottom node to the rest of the circuit as shown here. And basically we're going to keep connecting the capacitor to the ground and R2 to the ground and this is the ground node. So at this point we have completed drawing the circuit. So the next step is once you complete drawing the circuit is to is to define a new simulation. So we're going to create a new simulation here. We're going to call it sim1. I always call it sim1. You can call it any name you want it. So I can go sim1, sim2 and so forth. So here we're going to basically have bias and points uh, because DC analysis. So we make sure that's a transient response. We do apply, OK. And uh, I'm going to click on the voltages. Basically, this says that we're going to show the nodal voltages. I'm going to click on simulate. I'm going to run the simulation. And I'm not going to do any graphics, so I don't care about this window. Uh, so all what I need is just to show the voltages. Let me zoom in a little bit to see the values. So let's see if we can even zoom one more time. Yeah, we can. So once we zoom twice, that's what we have. So you can see that the voltage of this node is 12 volts, which is expected. The voltage of this node is 8 volts, which is expected. The voltage of this node is 6.3 or 3 volts. Uh, and the voltage of this node is also 6.3 or 3 volts. That means the voltage across the inductor from this end to this end is zero because the voltage or the voltages at both nodes are the same. So the voltage across the inductor is zero, which basically means that this particular circuit, uh, which basically means that the inductor behaves as a short circuit. And we expected that. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the uh, enable bias voltages. I don't want to show the bias voltages. I'm going to show the current DC values. So we can see that the current going through R1 from left to right, from this side to that side, is uh, 569.7 microamp. And the current going to the inductor from left to right, from this side to that side, is also 569.7 microamp. That means all of the current through R1 is flowing to L1. Zero current is flowing through the capacitor which makes sense because the capacitor at DC behaves as open circuit. Uh, the current going to be zero. So the capacitor behaves as open circuit and the current going to be zero. Now at this node, we have current coming in from the left will equal to 5.69, uh, 569.7 will equal to 569.7 microamp. And also the current through R3 coming from the right to the left will equal to 771.4 microamp. Now those two currents will join together at the node and the sum of those two currents 
will flow through R2, and this is going to give us 1.341 milliamp. So we applied KCL here, we were able to find the current through R2. Now in summary, when you want it to have any circuit with RLC circuit, and if all what you have is DC sources, can be voltage and or current sources, uh, but there is no switching and there is no time domain values of sources, voltages or current sources, then you always model the inductor as a short circuit and you model the capacitor as open circuit. Basically, the voltage across the inductor is going to be zero and the current through the capacitor is going to be zero. And then you do basic circuit analysis technique and you will be able to basically find the solution to the circuit. We were able to validate that using B splice or CAD, using the bias and voltage and currents to display the values of the circuit. And uh, this is the easiest way to do it using basically the bias and voltage and current values. I hope you like this video. Thank you and good luck to you.